So, hi everybody, here is Mark Harapetian for Spirit, The Smile and the Storm and the YouTube channel The Spirit Meets. I have a very wonderful guest uh, tonight, this is Judy Beecher from uh, New York City, right? Yes. And um, yeah, she has a new film uh, starting in German cinema October 19, Tango Shalom. For respect. My name is Viviana Nieves. What's yours? <laughs> the same way it is forbidden for a man to touch any woman other than one's wife. <laughs> and I think, uh, Judy, it's a very personal topic in uh, some way for you because when we talked before, you talked about your mom, so maybe. Well, this is not about my mom. I know that's not <laughs> about your mom, but you're also in involved in this topic of uh, um, uh, Jewish culture, for example. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But ten so uh, Tango Shalom, um, Tango Shalom is a little different. I mean, it is, it's about, um, it is definitely about Jewish culture. It's about a, a very, very orthodox uh, Hasidic family. And um, a, a rabbi is the head of the family. He play, it's my husband in the film. And uh, we're having financial problems. We have a, a very, very large family. And he doesn't know what to do, so he prays to God for help. And in a dream, God comes and tells him he has to dance the tango in a televised dance competition in order to resolve our, dance, our, our financial issues. But the problem is that he can't touch a woman who's not me, his wife. So he ends up going to all the other religions to ask for help you might find there is no need to touch this woman in tango. How can I achieve my goal without sacrificing my sacred beliefs? We're gonna kick him right out of the community. I got big problems. Big problems can be such big fun. How do we convince people that a young, pretty shiksa dancing partner is just <laughs> a young, pretty shiksa dancing partner? She should be dressing very modestly. You cannot even touch her hair. Also the Christian religion, uh, I, I, I know. So the Christian, also, Muslim, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hindu. And with this, we have Sikh. this re religious topic, but it's also a dance film. And uh, can you tell us about the dance scenes a little? Yes, yeah, so this, it's, a, uh, it's a family dance comedy. And it's in the vein of My Big Fat Greek Wedding. The, um, the the director of my big fat Greek wedding uh, produced our film, and uh, Joel Zwick, and Lainey Kazan, who was in my big fat Greek wedding, is also in Tango Shalom. So it's a very uh, it's a very fun family dynamic. And I just before we get to the dance portion of it, when I say family. It really, really is a family movie because it's. Uh, it was written by two brothers, mm -hmm. the the Lanyado brothers, yes. and the um, the Bologna family. Mm -hmm. So Gabe Bologna directed the film. So he's here in Germany as well, promoting the film. Um, his wife Zizi is one of the producers of the film, and she did the music for the film. His mother and father. So his father is Joe Bologna famous actor, Joe Bologna, and he played the priest in the movie and also co-wrote the film with the Lanyato brothers. And Renee Taylor is his mother, and she was on The Nanny and many, 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 many other things. Um, so it really is the coming together of two families to make this movie. And it just so happens many people that we knew were also involved in this film. So it really felt like a family making a film. Um, it was really a really fun experience. And to go back to your question about dance, uh, Karina Smirnoff, mm -hmm. uh, who is on, uh, she has been on many seasons of Dancing with the Stars. She plays the dance instructor in the movie. And uh, Jordi Caballero, who is the choreographer for on Dancing with the Stars, he's the choreographer on on our film as well. So, so you're in good company. You're in good very, company. Very, very, <laughs> very good company. Yes. And what do you expect now when the film come out to the world, to the audience? Um, we have also this. Um, 
all over the world, even we have uh, we come all together. We have still religious problem. Um, do you think this film can make a little change? Can also films change the world? And maybe this film. Yes. Yes. Can you explain? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm saying yes because it's an emphatic yes. Because this is why I got involved with this film. Because I, I knew I had to be involved with projects that were going to make change in the world, that were going to make a difference in the world. And when I first read this script, I was so impressed by the message of the film. I thought it was so important that I... I just really got behind it because I really, really wanted to see it in the world. And, um, you know, my hopes are, because the message is such a it's, it's a, it's about kindness and people being kind to each other and people, you know, not seeing each other as religions, but as friends and helping each other. That's the whole, that's the whole basis of this film. And yes, it's a comedy and yes, it's fun. And yes, it's kind of, it's almost like a fantasy. It's like a, it's like a Christmas movie that you can watch a million times every year. You want, you can watch this film over and over and over again, because it's so much fun and light. And it's just one of these things. And I tell this to people, they don't believe me, but I, I think I've seen this film now like 38 times. 38 times. <laughs> and I just saw it in German for the first time at the, you know, the, our premiere in, in Germany. With our wonderful friend Dieter. Yes. And Doris. Yes. And, and I, 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 I can still watch it. It's just very strange because I've never watched a movie more than once. I don't, anyone who knows me knows I never watch a movie more than once. Even my own movies and things that I'm in, I never watch more than once. This film, just like, I just can watch it a million times. I don't know, it's just so much fun every time. I feel, it's a, you walk out feeling good. I never had a best friend before. Who is that? You. <laughs> Good change for you, movie. because I'm completely different, the opposite of you. I watch my films that I love uh, many times, and <laughs> and uh, like for I know also I count uh, 2001 Space Odyssey 105 times. Oh my uh, god! And also shot it on a big screen wow. with uh, my ma magazine, and I'm also board of Cinema Museum. We collect analog copies, so I talk to the audience, but I still can watch it, uh, and I always discover something new. And I could never understand that like, <laughs> how someone could watch them so many times. Because there's so many movies out there to watch. There's so many things to watch. I watch other movies, right, yeah. Right, right. I want to see other new things. But just for some reason, this movie, I, someone's like, you want to watch yeah. Tango Shell? Okay. So this is your 2001 Space Odyssey. It's my 2001 Space Odyssey. It is, it is. And when we talked before, you um, told me that you visited today the Jewish uh, Museum. Maybe you can share your impressions with us? Yeah, no, I, I was kind of blown away by the Jewish Museum here in Berlin. Um, it, it, it got me and it was meant to do this like off balance you know I walked I, I couldn't get my grounding because it was like the way it's built it makes you like off balance to, to, to show like how people were when they had everything taken away and it really it focused on the the people like the people behind it wasn't just like the horrors of the Holocaust it was also these like incredible Jewish people that were part of society that were the doctors and the lawyers and the you know the the actors and the the dancers and the composers and the and and how it, it showed their life like you really got invested in their lives and then and then what really got me too there was hundreds of these hanging panels of the laws that were made from 1933 to 1945 and Every panel had like, you know, 40, I don't know, 30, 40 laws that were like every day they had a new law come out in 33, 34, 35, 36, you know, it was constant to, to make the Jews like have no more rights mm -hmm. at all. Like I, I was, I, I didn't know all of these laws. I haven't read all of these laws. And I mean, I should, I'm also, I'm making a film as well. I wanted to ask. Right now. 
um, about, I'm making a documentary because my mother was um, a hidden child in the Holocaust and my grandparents were from Germany. I'm, I'm German. I have a German passport. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Yes. And I, um, I, I'm from the, the Baden, Baden region. Baden-Baden. Ba not Baden-Baden, but Lorach, Offenburg, ah. um, Breisach, yeah. Freiburg. Uh, my mother was born in Lorach. And Lora. my my grandparents and my parents were deported from Freiburg. Mm -hmm. My my grandfather was the last cantor uh, in Lorach, and he was the last teacher of all the Jewish children in Freiburg before the deportation. And so I've been working on this documentary for a number of years now, and I've come to Germany. I've shot in Germany. I've done interviews with other survivors. I've I just really feel, and the reason that I'm doing this, it's not because I'm a documentary filmmaker, I'm an actress. And I know. I, I'm a producer. I also, you know, executive produced Tango Shalom. I just feel like it's so important that these stories are told. And my, my mother and my grandparents' story is a positive story because they survived. Yes. And my grandfather hid in the ceiling, my grandparents hid in the ceiling of the barracks of the, the uh, they were sent to southern France to Camp Gours. They were the first group of people to be sent, the Baden region was the first group of Jews to be sent. And they hid in the barracks of the schools, the children's school, for ten nights. And they didn't, they didn't go on the transport because they were hiding up in the barracks in the camp. And they escaped. And they were helped by, uh, by guards and by police that wanted to arrest them, but that ended up having a change of heart and helping them. Mm -hmm. And my mother as well, she was one of two children to escape alone across the French-Swiss border by herself at six years old. So this story is a very, very, very important story. So I'm here now uh, as well in Germany talking to some very important people. But, 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 but this sounds but also to, to make a wonderful feature film of it. It also make a wonderful feature film. It's very dramatic. Uh, yes, I'd like to also make a feature of it. I'd like to finish the documentary because while the people are still here with us, um, my mother's 86 now. I and, wanted to ask. And this. I'd like to, yes, finish it so that my family can, you know, she could see it. Before. Do you want to bring it to the to the cinema or a TV channel? You have an idea? Yes. I, well, I'd like it to be in this. I'd like it to be both. I'd like it to be in the cinema and then to extreme. Yeah. Good, yes. Good idea. Yeah. Both. So you because seem to. I want them, uh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> I want the most amount of people to be able to see this because I feel that the film and TV and our, you know, industry, it's very important because it's a medium that everybody sees. And it's, it, it's very influential for people, so I'm hoping it will change someone. By seeing this and seeing the humanity in these stories, I'm hoping that it'll make a difference. And I'm hoping also educationally, you know, for children and for people who don't know, who's, who knew. I, I, had, I had lunch uh, yesterday with a child. She was 13, but she didn't, didn't know. She's from, she grew up in Germany. She didn't know about the Holocaust. She heard about it from her father, from, but she didn't know about it. Oh. Mostly in Germany, though, they've done a very good job with trying to preserve yeah, the memory. Yes, of, they do a good job. And in the documentary, have to say, I yes. also am... Uh, I, I, not I, forgotten. I'm, I'm putting that out, you know, like how these small towns have done it, such a hard work, mm -hmm. you know, to preserve the memory of, of the Jews that were in their town. So I'm so grateful that they have been doing that. And I, I do give that, I'm going to be giving that light. In the And it's in the States, uh, because you live in New York City, it's also still in, in the mind of the people or it's more gone or forgotten, the Holocaust? No, it's not that it's forgotten, but I, I just feel, you know, anti-Semitism now is rising again around the world. And the, it's, it's, I hate to even say that out loud because I know when I began the, film it wasn't it was there was nothing and now it's been going up and that it's very scary because I think anti-semitism comes when the last generation is gone 
and there's no one there to tell the story anymore. And that's why people are working really, really hard to try to keep the memory of it because then they say, oh, it never happened because they never met somebody who actually went through it. Like, my mother went through this and my, you know, my family went through it and it's still so hard to believe for me. I, I, I'm, I'm watching it and it's hard to believe that something like this could have happened. This is really... You know? She's such a normal... You know, my mother is like a, a, a mom. She's like a normal mom from America. And like just to think that sh what she and my grandparents had to go through, you know, when I've lived a normal life growing up in America, and she made it very, she made sure that we had a normal life and that she did not, she never talked about it with us and didn't expose us to that. So, yeah. When I listen to you, I feel you are very proud on your Jewish roots uh, as I am proud on my Armenian uh, roots, uh, but it's wonderful. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, was I never thought too much about being Jewish, like, before. I just, that was, no, I, I never thought that there was any kind of difficulties in the world uh, growing up. I thought everyone was Jewish, because <laughs> I did. Try to be meant, no, that's a sentence. And then I went out of my little community, I was like, oh, there's all these other religions, <laughs> look at that. And there's something called anti-Semitism, this is horrible. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I didn't think about religion, it was just, you know, I'm, I'm extremely spiritual. I am mm -hmm. very spiritual. Um, and every day I meditate, I pray, and it's, you know, my own connection with God that I have. But... Um, Yeah, so it's, it's just very funny because now I'm doing all these Jewish things that I never thought about. I never even thought about being Jewish before. <laughs> it was just like, all right, yeah, it's something I, it's, it's my own. You, know, you do also the interview for my magazine, I'm the Spirit, called the Spirit. The Spirit meets, you know, we meet. My magazine is Spirit, a smile in the storm. So. so I'm also writing a book. Wow. Talented woman. I'm also writing a book and I'm almost finished. It's called um, Pray, Meditate, Write. The Teachings of Zolas, and it's my, it's my uh, experience, it's my journey of uh, becoming a channel in 2013, and tw 2012 and 2013, like Esther and Jerry Hicks, mm -hmm. who wrote The Law of Attraction and um, Ask and It Is Given, they've written all these books, they're very mm -hmm. famous in, uh, around the world, I don't know if you've, mm -hmm. you've heard of them. Yeah, before yeah. Um, so it's my so it, it was supposed to be just the information that kind of I had information come through me because mm -hmm. I didn't know how to meditate and all of a sudden yeah. all of a sudden I was like and I was like I felt this light on me and it filled the room and I was in a deep meditation and I didn't know how to meditate and all of a sudden I started writing and writing and writing and writing and it was kind mm -hmm. of like old English Not the way I write, not the way I speak. I didn't even know what it was I was writing. I wrote five books, and I'd never written anything. Nothing. I didn't think I could write, and all this stuff came through me. And this is my book. So it's the, it's the information that I channeled, which I'm supposed to share, because it's very wise information, and, and how to live your life in a, a spiritual... It's like spiritual success how to have spiritual success and solace in your life. Mm -hmm. And at the time in 2012, 2013, I didn't listen to it. I was channeling it and writing it, but I wasn't listening. But now I am. And my life is very different because I am. I, I picked it up again. I was doing everything that the writings told me. And I, I, my life has changed, like, in a beautiful, like, you know, spiritual But you have way. still time to be an actress. Yeah, well, that's my true love is acting. And I just this year, I just said I'm getting all my stuff out there this year. All my stuff is going in the world because it's not for me. Like I write and I, I write music as well. I have songs. I have so much material. I have plays and I've kept it all for me. But it's not for me. It's for everyone out there. It's, it's to enjoy. I've enjoyed it. <laughs> I've enjoyed it enough. You know, it's now for other people. Yeah. Uh, so you have a song? Uh, yes, I, I have many songs, but I've only I've so far published one. Um, it's called Paris ou la la. Paris ou la la. Paris ou la la. Qu'est-ce que c'est cette chanson d'amour, de hâte, de jalousie? C'est bête que très peu de choses sont claires. Ça serait mieux si tout finit bien. 
It's like a cabaret type song. Um, and I wrote it for a, a short film, but it's kind of like, it's about a, a, an American w woman who's obsessed with, you think it's a man, but it's not. It's with, she's obsessed with Paris. So it's Paris, ooh la la. Ooh la la, Paris. You can see it on uh, YouTube. <laughs> it's on YouTube. It's on every streaming platform. Um, oh, Check it out. Yeah, everywhere. Paris. And don't, there's two, actually, Paris, ooh la la. There's two. There's one, somebody else did a Paris, ooh la la. That's not me. It's Judy Beecher. That's what you have to put in. Judy Beecher, Paris, ooh la la. <laughs> And you played very different roles. I know also that uh, you were in The Bold and the Beautiful in 1997, <laughs> in the beginning of your acting career. And I, in, in that time, I, I watched it in, in, in television, yeah, in television, uh, German television with my mom sometimes. And also one actress is a friend of mine, Marissa Tate. Yeah, I found her on Facebook and then uh, first we were chatting and we become friends. You know her? <laughs> she, was, she was in the boat and the she beautiful one of uh, one of the leading. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't meet yeah. her. Also for I don't know, for one season or two seasons, she was there. You know, beautiful girl in yeah. that time. Still look good looking, of course, but now she's also forty or forty one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and so then a film is very uh, popular here also in Germany. Is Taken Three, of course. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah. can you tell us a little about your experience? Uh, We have the also wonderful uh, action hero, Liam Neeson, who also was Oscar Schindler in Schindler's List, so he has also can play very different uh, roles, but he, I think he's perfect for action films. He, he's, uh, he's one of my idols, Liam Neeson, if you're out there. Thank you. <laughs> no, I love Liam Neeson. I, loved, I love watching Liam Neeson because he can do a scene that is simple scene like getting out of the car <laughs> no I'm serious I would watch him do this getting out of the car like walking around the car like looking you know seeing if anyone is there and he has such charisma like that just fills the room like from across the room you're you he's so good like yeah <laughs> so yeah I just I just love him so <laughs> And is it true that you worked also in the beginning? The first thing what you did on, in film was uh, with Woody Allen, yeah, a commercial or something? Commercial. Yeah. Uh, I never watched it, so what was it <laughs> about? Please tell me. It was, a co it was called Coop Italia. Italia. So it was for the Italian market. So Coop Italia is a, is a chain of supermarkets for the Italian market. So it was like my very first job. <laughs> Woody Allen, I never expected yeah. that he did a commercial. And I did, yeah, it was a commercial. It was a commercial, yeah. It's fun, or was it, was it like comedy, or what was it? Was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was comedy, okay. yeah. But I was the woman in red. He pulled me out, and I was the woman in red. <laughs> that was my very first thing. Femme fatale. Femme fatale, yes. yes. And Woody was nice? Yes, it was funny, because I had always, like, run into... This is just... I would run into Woody Allen in different places, like, before I started acting. I'd be like on the line to try to get like a visa for France and he'd be there because he loved France, you know. So I would see him, I'd like, I didn't, I didn't dare talk to him at the time. I was like young, I was 19, you know. I was like, what are you doing? Oh my God. Yes. I have a poll in my magazine, Spirit is Smile in the Storm, where I ask uh, actors, directors and other human beings about their favorite films of their life. Can you name me now, like a little brainstorming, three of your all-time favorite films and please give a short reason. Three of my all-time favorite. Tango Shalom. <laughs> Tango Shalom, you gotta go see Tango watched Shalom. it many times, 38 <laughs> times. In it. Yes, I'm definitely one of my favorite films. Um, life is beautiful. I wanted to ask about it. Life really is beautiful. Why I felt because that's uh, Benini. I mean, that I, I. It's how I live my life, right? Because I've gone through hardship in my life, even though it doesn't seem like it. I have. Yeah, you know, I've done gone through a lot of things, and it's how it's your reaction to things mm. is what makes your life, right? Because you could either have a bad life, you know, 
all the time and, and even have good things happen and have a bad life, how you look at things. Or you can like be in a concentration camp and fall in love, you know, and, and look at the beauty of that you have something, you know, you make it, you know, it's just like the little things. I just, I loved that film so much. And it's really how I live my life. I try. I'm not always successful every day, but that's how I try to be in my life, in my world. Nice. And maybe a third one? Okay, a third one. <laughs> I, well, I love all those Italian, like Il Postino. Did, did, you, did you see Il Postino? Mm -hmm. Of course. And these are like the old, like yeah, classic. Yeah, no, There's other. This was his last film. Yeah, and I'm just trying to. I remember that was like one of my also. It was just like and the love of cinema. Was that the one with the? Now I'm getting them confused though. Il Postino. Um, ma, no, no, no. There's no, no Il Postino, and there was another one where he. Um, it was another foreign film where he loved the cinema so much, and he'd go cinema to the. Cinema Paradiso. That's the one. Yeah, this is that's the one. The one that I, yeah. I met. But all, I loved Il Postino too, but cinema. Yeah, yeah, Paradiso. Cinema Paradiso. Oh, yeah. I met also the leading actor, Jacques Perron. He looked like my father. He died last oh, year, the, the oh. Jacques Perron. He was the Prince Charming in the 1960s, really a teenage idol, a matinee idol. Also when he was so young, he was so handsome oh, wow. and uh, really a, a huge star in France, yeah? playing with Claudia Cardinale together. They were nearly children, also looking like teenagers. And so, and he was in one, and also in set by Costa Garros, the first Polit thriller. He was also the producer of the film. He played the journalist. I did the interview. It was one of the favorite films of my father. And so, we become also friends. I love also Cinema Paradiso. And uh, Ennio Morricone, he invited me to his house. It was a palazzo oh. before Sofia Loren uh, lived there. And it's, um, yeah, it was wonderful. Um, Ennio was also gone. But uh, I met him often. Uh, I'm also very connected to film music, you know. Yes, so, yes, yeah. Yes. And also Roberto I met at the Berlin International Film Festival when he did uh, Pinocchio uh, three years ago. And then he brought me also backstage to all of the actors, uh, little Pinocchio. And so it was, we celebrated together. Oh, wow. He's really a warm-hearted uh, person. Also, love this man. It's really cool. Oh. Yeah, so you have a good taste. <laughs> yeah. I came to I went to Berlinale a long time. That was my last time in in Berlin mm. since like 10 years ago I was at Berlinale. So, you're so I love Berlin. You were often in Berlin or not? No, I don't know. This is my second time. Ah, the second time. No, it's actually <laughs> I'll tell you what I love about Berlin okay. though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I love the food. I love the food here in Berlin because I have all these food allergies and I'm, you know, organic, I bio and, you know, and here the f I can find everything. Like, I'm just blown away with like, and not in France and not in the States, here in Berlin. Mm -hmm. So I love that, the food in Berlin. Um, and I, I love, because it's, so, it's like, like just international culture and people are just can be whoever they want to be and <laughs> they're just kind of <laughs> so yeah so I love that about Berlin and and last night I went to right around the corner from here and I don't know the name and I should know the name because I could give a shout out for their place it's a little because we're on like Oderberger Strasse right uh, now yeah, yeah, and there's a little um, place that does uh, music from the 20s, mm. like these groups, that fantastic group from the from the 1920s, and I got up and sang with the group, but oh. it was like beautiful, like you know, 1920s music without uh, you know acoustics and a little room. Mm -hmm. I don't like that everybody smokes here in a little tiny space, but other than that, I like. That's also Berlin. That's very Berlin. There's a lot. Of, yeah, that's there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of different things with Berlin. <laughs> and Judy, can you maybe say in the end of our wonderful co conversation for, for now, for the interview, something in German? Ah. Something special, maybe? Yes, <laughs> yes. Meine Mutter ist von Deutschland geboren, aber ich spreche nicht Deutsch. Ganz gut, gar nicht so schlecht. <laughs> no, das ist alles. <laughs> Judy. I say it very well. Though. Yeah, well, well, good pronunciation, right? The cinematographer agree. Yes. So this was Judy Beecher for Spirit, the Smile and the Storm and the YouTube channel The Spirit Meets and uh, October 19th. October 19th. Enter all. Cinemas all across Germany. Um, yes. Tango Shalom. You have to go see it. Yes. And, and uh, like us on social media, tangoshalom.com. We try our best. 
And now it's up to you. <laughs> and my documentary is kindnessofstrangersdoc.com if you want to know more about that. It's not done yet. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. I also want to give a shout out to Spirit, A Smile and a Storm, and Legendary Visions. And of course to me, Judy Beecher Official on Instagram. It's Judy with an I. Paris, ooh la la, Paris, ooh la la, the sidewalk cafes, the Eiffel Tower, the lovers kissing everywhere. Paris, ooh la la, Paris, ooh la la, qu'est-ce que c'est cette chanson d'amour, de hâte, de jalousie? C'est bête que très peu de choses sont claires, ça s'arrête mieux, c'est tout funny, bien. T'es où mon chéri, t'es où mon oh la la, je suis là, je te cherche, tu m'échappes, je te suis. T'es où mon oh la la, je sais bien que tu me veux, je sais bien que tu me veux, je sais bien que tu es. Oh la la, Paris.